Welcome back to my kitchen, a different kitchen because I'm outside. You might hear the lambs in the background. They want some food, but it's too early for them on a field full of grass, but they want the bottle of milk that they uh, know and love. Anyway, today I have been outside this morning and I've stocked up our honesty stall that we've got just outside the gates of the house. Um, I'll put anything on there from spare eggs that we've got to rhubarb, which I've got in abundance at the moment, some absolutely huge sticks of rhubarb and any spare veg, um, some of the plants that I've grown, all that kind of stuff will go on the honesty stall. We just leave a little tin, um, some prices out there. Sometimes we'll say pay what you can. Sometimes we need to cover costs like with the eggs, we need to cover the cost of the chicken feed um, and we just leave that out. And if anybody happens to walk past or if they know of us, then they come along, pick those up. So I went out there this morning and restocked with fresh eggs brought in the old eggs that were still fine, but I never know how long people are going to keep them for um, once they've taken them off. They may assume that they've just been laid that morning, which they have for the ones that I've just put out, but I will leave them out there a few days up to a week because eggs will last fresh um, as long as it's not too hot, which it hasn't been, let's face it, um, you know, for a good three weeks or more. I would never leave them out there for that long, but always only at the most a week old, usually the very, very fresh. Um, so I've brought in the eggs that have been out there a few days. We will then use them ourselves um, for the next few weeks. I just keep alternating those. And I've also brought in the rhubarb that is still, as you can see, absolutely perfect to use. It's still really firm, um, but it's starting to go on the ends where it's been chopped off at the from the leaf. It's starting to dry out and it just doesn't look as good. Um, and people buy with the eyes, let's be honest. So we will use this rhubarb for ourselves and that's what I'm going to do out here today is just get some basic stewed rhubarb. I'm not going to add any ginger, I'm not going to add any orange, just want some basic stewed rhubarb on the pantry shelves for the winter. So that's the plan but before I do that I know what's going to happen, everybody's going to want feeding because it's coming up to lunchtime. So I'm going to make a really quick hearty pasta soup. I've done a recipe on this, a video on this before, it's using tortellini. Basic ingredients, it's carrots, onions, a tin, a, just a cheap tin of tomatoes if you don't have your own, which we don't at the moment, um, and just a few herbs, some stock and the tortellini. You can add whatever's in season from a veg point of view, if you want to add kale in, things like that. You could maybe add parsnip and stuff. I'm just sticking to the basics today because it's really easy to do it and really quick. So I'm just going to get that on. When that's done, I'm ready to just heat up when everybody starts saying, I'm hungry. And I'm going to get on with stewing the rhubarb. It's going to be shelf stable as i mentioned it's for winter for the winter pantry so what that means is we're going to water bath it and we'll be doing that for 10 minutes if you've never water bath before i'll show you how i do it there's a few different variations of what people um how people go about it but essentially it's the same end result so i'm going to get on get the soup done and then we'll come back and get the rhubarb done together <music> gently simmering away so I've got about 20 minutes until that's done and then I just need to add the pasta so that'll be all good. I've never sterilised jars using sterilising fluid before but I don't normally I use the oven the electric oven but I don't want to put that on today because it's so expensive to put it on just for the jars I'm not going to be using it for anything else if I was cooking something else in there then I could just add the jars in at the right temperature I normally put the jars in um, wet now everyone again has their own different methods of doing this but if you're interested I put the oven on to 140 and 
I put the jars in, I washed them in soapy water, rinsed them, put them straight onto a baking tray in the oven for 10 minutes. And I've always done it that way. Um, and they've been absolutely fine, but obviously do your own research for how you want to sterilize. Now today I'm gonna to try this. It says it, for every five liters of water, you put in a cap full of fluid. I think this was £2.50 in Tesco. You can probably get it cheaper in the likes of Wilco's or Savers and things like that. And it just says, close the lid, submerge the items in water in uh, just 15 minutes, everything is ready to use and it stays sterile for 24 hours. So items can stay in the solution until needed so you don't have to whip them out after 15 minutes. Other accessories can be used and in, in, put in the solution as well because it's obviously talking about baby bottles and things like that. But we're using it for jam jars. So renew the solution every 24 hours so you can keep it um, and add to it over 24 hours, which I thought was really good. What I'm doing is using one of my um, fermentation buckets, my wine buckets. And coincidentally, and luckily, we have got a five litre bottle um, of water because I'm doing this outside. So I'm just gonna go and fill this up. Wait, sorry, a five litre water bottle that's empty. I wouldn't use bottled water just to do this. I'm gonna fill it up out of the tap, add a cap full of this. I'm gonna go inside and give the jars a wash because they're all in there. I've just got some old honey jars. So we buy raw honey from a local provider and it's got they've got screw top lids. I'm just gonna give them a rinse, they're clean, but I'm just gonna have a quick rinse of everything. I have no idea how many jars this is gonna make because I've just got a ton of rhubarb there that you can see in the corner of the screen um, that didn't sell on the stall. And we're just gonna say, I'll wait all out um, and I'll tell you how I'm doing it. But essentially, you need to get on with the sterilization first so that I can then start chopping this up um, and getting the sugar and seeing where we are. And actually, I've just realized I was gonna do it in that pan. So I need to go and get another pan from the house too. I'll let you know how we get on. I'll go and wash the jars, come back when all of this is done and they are in the bucket sterilising. I just had to move that soup to the back because that burner's a bit, a little bit too hot for it. It's, um, it's off a gas bottle, if anyone's wondering. We are going to do a kind of an opening video or a, what's it called, a reveal or whatever you want to call it, video of the outdoor kitchen that I'm working in now. And um, we're going to record that tonight, so it'll be in one of the next videos coming up if you're interested. Right, I've filled up my five litre bottle, which is down here. And I'm going to put in one cap full of this solution. That's interesting, they show it, they kind of give you a, an overflow. Um, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to pour some water in here first. Because this might take more than five litres um, to cover all of these jars. And then I'm going to pour this into here because this bottle won't be used for it. Well, it doesn't matter if it's used for anything else. It's only going to sterilise it just to mix it up a bit. Two bottles at least. So this time I'm going to add a little bit generous with the solution just in case I go over. I'm going to add that to the bottle. I'm going to go and fill this up. Just sterilise my own hand. And then that should be enough. If not, we'll go again. I can imagine these will be in a lot longer than 15 minutes, so I'm not going to bother setting a timer because it'll take long for me to chop that up, uh, chop the rhubarb up and um, get it cooked off and everything. So it'll be in a couple of hours realistically because I'm going to have to feed everyone in between as well. I've got the jars in there sterilising, so as I say, they're going to be in for quite a while now. I'm going to start cleaning or chopping my rhubarb up, topping and tailing it and getting it ready for the pot, which I need to go and grab one. Um, I'm gonna be water bathing this, as I said. Now, basically water bathing is, you, we're gonna submerse the jars in hot water, bring that water up slowly up, up to boiling point um, and leave them in there for 10 minutes. Every, every different, there's lots of different ways of um, times for water bathing, depending on what the food is that you are water bathing. Today, we will be water bathing for the rhubarb for 10 minutes. Um, some recipes say 15, I've always done it for 10. If you want to be um, super cautious, you can do it for 15. Um, but essentially you're preventing any um, bacteria being able to grow in the rhubarb. There is sugar in this recipe. Um, so that in itself is a pres preservative, but the water bathing will just make sure that these are gonna be safe for the next 12 months, but usually longer, but these will be gone within 12 months for sure. So I'm gonna start chopping up. We've got sugar, which is the only other, well, a, a little bit of water, um, but sugar is the only other ingredient that we're going to be using in this method. And basically we're gonna chop the rhubarb up nice and small because it's big, chunky rhubarb. I mean, that size of that is, 
you know it's it's a good good size so i'll be doing it quite a bit smaller and then i'll wait to see how much we're working with and i'm going to work out around for every four to five hundred grams of rhubarb i'll be putting about 100 grams of sugar all of that will just go in one big pot we'll just get it stewed down i don't like my rhubarb recipes with big chunks of rhubarb in them some people try and um steep the rhubarb in the sugar to keep it whole so that the rhubarb retains its its shape and its size i don't like that i prefer it of the the stew like consistency so that's what i'm going to be going for today we'll get that cooked down and then we will get it put into the jars you should really have warm jars for this recipe which is why i normally do them in the oven i'm going to see how we get on because with them going in the water bath anyway um, which is just a big pan it's not a special um it's not a special piece of equipment like a pressure canner is um but because we're going to be water bathing them anyway and the rhubarb will be going into the jars quite warm i'm hoping to get away without any thermal shock and cracking of the jars but really you should have hot jars hot liquid or hot stew that's going into them into a hot water bath that's how you're supposed to do it but because i don't want to put the oven on because it costs far too much doing it this way with the milton steri sterilizing uh, liquid will probably work out cheaper given how much it costs to heat the oven these days so we'll see fingers crossed it works out i've chopped up just a few stalks and we're already at just over two kilos and i've still got all of this left so i may be here some time um i've got my old dutch oven pot out here which is, as you can see, very well loved and very discoloured, but it does a grand job because it's really thick bottom. So for two kilos, I'm going to use 500, no, 400 grams of sugar. Basically, it's sweetened to taste. Add in just a little bit of um, water, maybe a couple of hundred mil, probably 100 to start off with, going up to two. I'll let you know at the end how much I ended up using. And that's just so that it doesn't stick and it gives it a bit of moisture to get started on the stewing down process. Some people don't add any. As I say, they just leave it in the sugar and the sugar then creates a syrup and they'll, they'll just use that. I'm going to add water because I don't want to leave it and have really big chunks of rhubarb. So when I've got the stewed rhubarb, um, I'll show you a little bit in between. But when I've got the stewed rhubarb, I'll show you how I pot it up and how I water bath it. Just bits. I've taken some of the jars out of the cold water and these are still quite cold. So I have the water bath canner, which is just a big saucepan um, that's got a little bit of warm water in it. I'm just a little bit concerned that it might be too warm, but the rhubarb is stewed. You've just seen that and that is also still uh, hot. It's steaming. So I'm just going to give it a try with one jar. I'm going to fill it up um, and pop it in the canner. And if that works, then I'll just go ahead and do all of the rest. going to give the rim of the jar a quick wipe, put on a sterilised lid and then pop it in the canner. I'll do them all at once and put them all in the canner if this one works okay. Seems to have worked, okay. So all I'm going to do now is just refill the rest of these jars, making sure every um, lid, uh, sorry, every rim of the jar is cleaned before I put the lid on. Fill them up quite full. See, that needs a good clean because it's just had rhubarb off the top. Actually just going to put them in one at a time because it's just as easy just as quick rather and then when i've done this once i'll know how how many jars i can get in this canner or this water bath I'll So 
the water bath uh, can actually take eight jars, but two kilos has made seven of those jars, which I think are either four or 500 mil, I'll confirm on the screen. So all I'm doing now, we can see that the water is a good inch above the jars. I might add in a little bit more water, um, just so that it's got a bit more headspace. Bring that to the boil. When it comes to the boil, I'll set my timer for 10 minutes. going to come up to the boil now slowly over 15 to 20 minutes as I say what I could do is put a divider on top of that and then another set of jars on the top if space allowed if you've got a larger saucepan you can do that and also just note on the bottom there I do have a little trivet which stops the jars touching the bottom of the pan um, and causing any breakages so just taking every every precaution possible I'm going to leave that lid on so that we don't let any more heat out and um, oh see yourself and then I'll show you what the end result looks like it's the next morning and as you can see these are looking really good they have actually all sealed i can tell that because all of the lids are sucked in ever so slightly so i'm really pleased and now i know how many jars the canna can hold or the water bath can hold and i'm going to keep doing this because as you can see also i've got quite a bit of rhubarb to get through some of it's a bit worse for wear we'll just chop those bad bits off plenty more where that came from too so i will be getting on with this later today i won't show you all of that because you've seen it once it's going to rain later so that is the perfect time for me to be making my way through some of this preserving i presume some people will want to know how long this will keep and um, once you've walked past something it's supposed to be good for 12 months i've had things for a lot longer than 12 months but be sensible when you open it any sign of anything that doesn't look right use your judgment don't use it if use your eyes use your nose and then lastly use your mouth if it doesn't taste right don't eat it one thing is taste it before you jar it up and then you'll know what it's supposed to taste like but this will be good we'll get through this um certainly by i would have said february time something like that march when the warmer months start coming we love this in the winter over anything porridge um over pancakes you can use it just to drizzle over ice cream Stephen likes it cold, I prefer mine warm, but that's just personal preference. Anyway, please will you give this video a thumbs up if you've learned anything from it and if you enjoy it. If you're into this kind of content, there will be lots more coming up. So please click the subscribe button and I will see you next time. Don't forget to leave me a comment. Bye for now.